to get started with ShaderFX, first thing you need is a pretty current version of Autodesk Maya. It was first introduced in Maya 2014 LT edition and then came with every package of Maya since 2015. And I'm running 2016 Service Pack 3. So the first thing I think you should enable is to run DirectX 11 in the viewport. And to do that and make sure that you have that enabled, go to Settings Preferences and Preferences. Check the Display tab and at the very bottom you have Rendering Engine. You should set that to DirectX 11 because a few of the shader features we're going to use or you might want to use in the future in ShaderFX require that you have DirectX 11. If you change to this and save, you're going to be prompted that you need to restart Maya and you need to restart to, to have this enabled. So go ahead and do that if you don't have DirectX 11 uh, running already. To then apply a shader FX material to your object, you go about it as you would when applying any other ob uh, material in Maya. That is, for instance, you can right click and go assign new material and then you can choose shader FX shader. It might be that you don't have this in your list and that's probably because as uh, with other plugins in Maya as well, they have a tendency to sometimes um, unload themselves or not be loaded at startup. I, I can't tell you why, but I know that there's a shader FX plugin here and you need to have this enabled to be able to use the shader and have this available here. So I'll go ahead and choose shader FX shader and I'll make sure that I'm in hardware texturing mode or number six on your keyboard. And this works fine with the using all lights as well. Uh, I don't have any lights in the scene yet, but. And uh, once you've applied this shader FX material, the way you go about editing this material is in the shader FX editor window. And to access that, you go to the shader FX node and click this big open shader FX button. To my knowledge, you can't access this window through the regular windows and editors menus. You, you open it through this button here, unless they've actually added this in the later versions now. So I think this is the way you open shader FX. Uh, eventually when you start building your shaders you might uh, start exposing or you probably will start exposing different parameters. Say that you've built a complex shader and you want to uh, to enable a few of the settings for the end user to change such as relevant textures or settings. Then you will have them listed here underneath the attributes and some of them underneath settings. If you're running newer versions like I am 2016 service pack 3 you can have this window open here and change these parameters at the same time. In older versions of Maya, as far as I know, you can't have both the shader FX editor window open and have this um, exposed uh, summary of your uh, shader attributes. Then you had to close this window for them to pop up here. And even if you had this minimized, you might not be able to access your shader settings. And that would throw you off and you would go like, hey, where's all my settings? and uh, all right, I've got the editor open. But at least from what I've noticed in the later versions in Service Pack 3 for 2016, uh, it will work with the Shader FX window open. And the reason for this is when you've got this window open and the attribute editor, you can select different nodes and you see that you will have context sensitive settings for that specific node. So for instance, let me show you what I just talked about. If I click this expose material input and I'll call this my color and then if I deselect you'll see that I have my color here and you would go about exposing the different things you wanted the end user to change and have them here and that is since I don't have anything selected they would pop up here but if you're running older versions of Maya with shader FX, you need to close this window for these exposed variables and parameters to show up here. Right, so um, another thing to mention about shader FX is that there's a thing called advanced mode here in settings. It's not enabled by default. I usually always have this enabled or I always do have it enabled. And what it does is that it's going to show you more nodes out here in the node library. That is the available nodes that you can build your shaders from. 
and also with this um, advanced mode enabled you can do anything in the shader effects editor if you don't have this enabled you couldn't for instance delete this here set of core nodes at least not these two it would prohibit you it says down here some nodes could not be deleted certain nodes can only be deleted in advanced mode and at least for my sake I like to be able to to do anything I want in this editor and not be limited by some um, some yeah some limit so what I usually do um, is that as you can see I al I've already got this set of um, shader nodes or groups here at start there was even a color node here which I managed to delete and this is the the standard uh, traditional game surface shader that Autodesk uh, has built for you that you can use with shader FX and it's kind of like a Swiss army knife of a shader in that it, it has several uh, good real-time shader features that you might want so you might just be happy with working with this and just use this for your project but Autodesk already has several tutorials for, for um, working with, with this shader and I'm instead going to be focusing on building your own shader things from scratch well mostly at least so what I usually do in most cases is I, I delete this and start from scratch from here so um, things you need to know about the editor in general you can move around and pan around like you would in any editor in Maya you add new nodes by left clicking and dragging them I'm not sure if you can double click as well and it will add it to the top left corner here but you could also just drag it out like this and these nodes connect the flow goes from left to right that is if I had let's say uh, two color nodes for instance and I wanted to multiply these colors together I could just connect let's say the RGB from one and the RGB from the other one and I would have the multiplied results from these two and as you can see with the arrows they go from left to right so I'd advise you to always build in this manner when you lay out the nodes not like this because it's going to be hard to, to read through the network and see what's going on so place them like this flowing from outputs on the right side into the inputs of the next node and as you can see with, uh, with this here node, node browser you can type in if you know the name of the node you can start typing let's say I want the add node I can just type in there and get the add node or let's say I wanted the texture map and it will filter through all of the, the um, shader nodes and just show me nodes that have the texture word in them so texture map for instance you can also create these nodes by right clicking out here in the empty space and using this fold out menu I'm not that accustomed to it and um, uh, some people might prefer it but I like to be able to to type in here it's um, you don't have the unreal type of feature in that you can right click and then start typing sadly but at least you can filter through the nodes here which work fine for me so I usually create them from here um, <clears throat> other things worth noting is I already showed you that if you select a node you get specific parameters for that node type such as texture map I can load the texture from here you can if you don't want to use the attribute editor enable another window called property panel which will dock into the shader editor and I think and yeah and you, you get the same parameters but you get them in this property window instead of the attribute editor so you can easily um, change the values here I'm recording on just one screen now so I might have some trouble with accessing the attribute editor here and the property panel at, at the, or actually I like to have this full screen and then the property panel works better for me since I only have one screen so um, what else yeah to connect this I already spoke to you but um, about this but you just left click and drag and drop it onto here and to delete the node you can select one of these uh, connections and just press delete to delete it you can also overwrite uh, an incoming connection like this I could take this one and drop it on top of this one which will automatically disconnect this one and there's another thing to mention uh, in that if you see that these different spheres here that symbolize outputs and inputs they are color coded and the color represents what type of data stream um, is connected or, or a certain node would accept or output 
So a green node is a float value. If you just left click and drag like this, you can see that it says float. And that means that it's a single uh, decimal value. And tur turquoise colored uh, is a float three and a pink is a float four. The yellow one is float two for UV. And uh, there are a few different ones, but those are the most uh, common ones. So I think that's um, pretty much it to get you started with shader FX. Later on in the following lessons, I will cover more more um, functionalities in shader FX. But but those are the core basics to get started with connecting and creating shader networks in shader FX. So I think that's about it. I'll see you in the next lesson. Please let us know what you thought about the video and what you want to see next. To see more, visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter.